welcome back to another YouTube video. This one is a bit different because I'm sat down. I know. But I wanted to talk to you today about something that I've been, I say, doing, dealing with for about three months, I think. I don't know, I don't do math. But that is a condition called fibromyalgia. So I was diagnosed with it around early June. Sorry. Yeah, early June. It might be June, I think it was. Um, let me tell you, it's not a short journey. But nevertheless, I'm very grateful to the NHS uh, that we're able to finally help me get an answer. Um, quick disclaimer, because I know what some of you are like. This is no way me trying to attention seek or, you know, get some sympathy, because I'm not like that. This is just simply me trying to raise awareness for a condition which I feel like many people don't know much about. Um, so it's not one of the famous ones but anyway let's get on to the video so for me everything started back in i want to say november um when i finally decided i was going to do something about it um so i'd always felt like something wasn't right I'm good at pointing out things that were just not right um and i finally wanted to do something about it because for those of you who know me you know i like to procrastinate so after a few chats with pastoral at school, I decided to phone up my doctor um, and I made a telephone appointment with her at first. So I discussed with her in detail what was going on, like I was feeling exhausted and fatigued even though I hadn't done anything, um, muscle, joint pains, concentration, um, memory. And at this time I was revising for exams as well, or like exams were coming up, so it all came at an amazing time. Um, yeah, and I could not do exercise. I could do it, but my body didn't like it. Um, and yeah, I was basically just feeling awful. As I'm sure many people with a condition would tell you. And I said to her, it just doesn't seem normal for my age. She was like, yeah, it's not. I was like, great. Uh, so we decided that she, that, uh, she was going to see me in person. Um, and she was going to send me off for a blood test as well to check my T4 levels, which is something to do with your thyroid. Because there's a condition that runs in my family called hyperthyroidism. And that can cause sometimes like tiredness and joint problems. So yeah, we decided to test for that. That came back normal. So this condition, there's not a test that you can do. It's about narrowing it down and it's the same with uh, chronic fatigue as well. Um, so yeah. No hypothyroidism. Um, so she she examined me in person. She wasn't worried, but again, it wasn't normal. But she said to keep an eye on it, let her know if it gets any worse. So I went back to see her a few times because I was just like, no, this is it's not not working. And then on the thirty first of January, she referred me to the rheumatology department at Pole Hospital. Uh, I need to see someone. She said, like, okay, I'll refer you. Get on with that. So she did that. And originally we came to the conclusion that it could be rheumatoid arthritis. Um, for those of you who don't know, there's not links, but the symptoms through like uh, CFS and fibromyalgia and uh, RA, they're quite similar. So it's hard to pinpoint one and it's quite common for people to be misdiagnosed. Um, so yeah, even though a blood test didn't show anything for rheumatoid, we thought, uh, thought like, could be it. The referral was the thing that took the longest. <laughs> and, yeah. No shame to the NHS. Covid's fault for creating a massive backlog in everything. I'm sorry to say the C word, but, you know. So yeah, it took me about, I want to say, four or five months. And few appointments have been cancelled, so, you know. I went to see her late May, early June of June. Um, and she was, so I saw the consultant, she was asking me questions, you know, family history and my symptoms. So and then she took me into another room, she examined me, she was bending my joints, you know, testing everything. Um... She was like, 
fortunately, maybe not fortunately, you don't have rheumatoid arthritis, but you do have fibromyalgia. Is that okay? At least we've got an answer. Where do we go from here? Um, I actually have the report here. Um, so the thing with fibro is there's I think 18 tender points to, there's like a criteria, and there's 18 tender points in your body. I've got 13 of them. <laughs> go me. It's not a competition, but yeah. So I've got 13 of them. And um, so I didn't have any swollen joints, which is what happens with rheumatoid arthritis. She suggested I get an MRI scan because I had a lot of pain in sort of like my hips and groin region. So we just wanted to be safe, check that there was nothing there. Um, so yeah, she, she examined me and it was clear that I was in a lot of pain. So that's how we got to that diagnosis throughout the referral period. I was experiencing quite a few flare-ups of the condition and obviously I couldn't really talk about it to anyone because we didn't really know so I just sort of sat in my bedroom <laughs> crying to Shanice on the one thing that I found quite difficult is I didn't really I felt like I couldn't really speak about it but yeah so I finally got an answer and I can't thank the NHS enough and everyone else who helped me um luckily it's one thing that she said to me I'm at the bottom of the severity scale, so I'm not on medication, but there is medication available. So she said if my condition gets worse, which at the moment is manageable, um, then I can go back and see my doctor and they might be able to help me. I'm managing it with just like ibuprofen, paracetamol at the moment, and that seems to be okay for me. Just reduces it. Doesn't take the pain away completely, but it just reduces it. So yeah, fibromyalgia. Is what I have. Okay, so told you my diagnosis story, I guess. Um, now I'm going to just educate you on the condition because I couldn't find many YouTube videos when I first heard of it. Just finding out facts about it. Write us, I will pop their website in the description so you can have a look. So, yeah, so fibromyalgia is a lifelong condition. Um, that causes pain and tenderness in all parts of your body pretty much all the time. Um, so the condition is also linked to like uh, poor sleep. So I went to bed at 3am that day. Um, bad concentration and memory. Um, yeah, that's one of the things that I struggle with. So I'm sure many of my friends will be able to uh, tell you that and my school, um, an extreme fatigue and tiredness that does not improve the sleep, that's one of the most uh, common ones and people will tell you that um, it is, but it just stops us from doing a lot of things, so yeah. It's estimated that somewhere between 1.8 million and 2.9 million people in the UK have the condition. Now, I don't know about you but that sounds like a lot. Um, and it appears the women, sorry, are diagnosed with it than men. And it most commonly develops between the ages of 25 and 55. So I'm one of the lucky ones who's not common. Um, children can get it. Um, so yeah. And it's not known how it's caused actually, which I think you'll find with these related conditions. Just magic, I guess. Uh, but there is a theory, ready to get sciencey that um, it can be caused with problems within a person's central nervous system uh, which controls all their sensations, movements that the body makes so I guess I should thank my central nervous system for that I hope you feel a little bit more educated on the condition um, if you didn't know anything about it because it's one of those conditions, like the hidden disabilities, that you can't see. You don't know what's happening on the inside of someone's body. You can't see it. And I think that gives us an extra reason why we should all be considerate of other people, I think. Because you don't know what's going on. Um, I want to hear from you guys, for the people who also have the condition. What helps you? Like, not like just medication but sort of mentally because it can cause anxiety i know 
it does for me anxiety wise and generally just feeling rubbish um what helps you guys for me is music music is a lifesaver for me so again i hope you guys feel a bit more educated on the condition comment down below if you know anyone with it and what helps you and remember my dms are always open on instagram if you need someone to talk to if you want to find out a bit more information you can click on the links in down below and yeah if you know someone with a condition just educate yourself that's all we ask and um, just be there for us and educate yourself so you know what not to say what to say what to do etc thank you so much for watching um sorry if this video is a bit all over the place but i don't usually do sit down videos so i hope you have enjoyed this one and yeah i will see you in my next video bye